Hey folks, welcome back to Welcome to My World. It's Dominique back here with you. And as you may have seen on Dominique Does Life on Facebook, we are going to be talking about a tough subject, but something that really needs to be discussed a lot more than it is. And that subject is rape. Yes, rape is a thing. Yes, it happens. And yes, it's with the business of avoiding sexual assault, of avoiding unwanted attention, of avoiding rape. Now we could talk about why this is. Perhaps it is because we don't give men the credit that they deserve. Perhaps we don't expect enough from them. Perhaps we should actually just something out of left field here, expect them to be in control of their own behavior and to moderate their behavior appropriately and accordingly in any given situation. But we're not going to go there today. What we're going to talk about today is how women avoid rape on a daily basis. And in fact, I'm going to compare and contrast it with how some of my male friends, acquaintances, readers, and listeners avoid rape on a daily basis. So I have uh, aggregated these answers that I have gotten to the question that I put out there earlier this week on my Facebook page, on my personal Facebook page, I should clarify, um, as to what precautions you take, whether you're a woman or a man, whether you're uh, a, a certain sex or gender, to avoid rape. You know, whatever your sex is, whatever your gender is, I want to know how you avoid rape. You guys came through, you answered me, and we have a really incredible discussion going. So, you know, I don't always do this, but I'd love to invite you guys to check out my personal Facebook page, Dominique Miller. And I'd love for you to go ahead and contribute to that discussion. Uh, of course, I don't put up with trolling of any kind. And as as you know, <laughs> because you've been listening to me for a while now, I'm really not the person to fool with on that. So, you know, take it somewhere else if that's what you're planning on doing. Or, you know, suggestion, open your ears and close your mouth and actually listen to what people are saying rather than engaging in destructive and meaningless behavior. Right? <laughs> Imagine that. Hey, common sense here. So uh, I do very much appreciate everyone giving me their answers. And I just want to assure everyone one last time that while aggregating these answers, um, I was sure to list the answers by popularity rather than uh, by name. So I'm certainly not here to out anyone. I'm certainly not here to make anyone feel um, it targeted or disgust or uncomfortable, right? So without further ado, I'm going to read you the question that I wrote out, and then I'm going to read you some of the answers that I got back. Now, just giving credit where credit is due, I didn't think of this question myself. Uh, a friend of mine, again, not going to name names because I didn't get their okay uh, to discuss them on today's show. And, and I like to make sure that consent is an issue that is respected here at Dominique Does Life and Welcome to My World. Um, but a friend of mine, uh, just an amazing progressive crusader, let's call this person, um, who is just woke AF, if you can still say that in 2018, <laughs> um, shared this. She, she, I got this from her. She shared this on social media. And wow, I, I was blown away. So I had to uh, open this up to my readers and my friends. And then I wanted to go ahead and incorporate this into a discussion here on Welcome to My World with Dom. So, here's the question I asked. An important survey is what my post says. Inspired by a friend, I'm taking a survey for an upcoming live show. Which, hey, you're listening to right now. 
Tell me what precautions you take on a daily basis to avoid unwanted, okay, not that it would be wanted, but to avoid unwanted sexual assault, sexual attention, unwanted touch, unwanted remarks, even rape. I need to hear from men on this as well as women, and I want to hear your answer. Even if your answer is nothing or I don't have to think about it. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read some of these answers, and I'm going to start out with a male friend's answer, and I appreciate his honesty very, very much. I appreciate him listening um, too, as well as sharing. I appreciate him listening. Uh, I appreciate him weighing in in a positive way and just creating space for everyone to have this discussion and holding space. That's something that really makes me feel good, and I want to really give a shout out to my male friends and readers for doing that. You rock. You are awesome. Thank you. This is what being an ally looks like. This is just what being a woke person looks like, okay? Let's be real. So, His answer is not much daily, but there have been times I dressed poorly, badly rather, or uh, the like to avoid women looking at me. It's easier for men in general and me since I'm not attractive in the classical sense. Well, yeah, I mean, I I appreciate that answer very, very much. And hey, I I just want to put it out there. I don't I don't think that rape is not a thing that happens to men. Um, Not that that would be something that any of us would think. But I do happen to know that it's something that is just culturally uh, inherent when it comes to the female experience, when it comes to being a woman. And it's something that we can't get away from. So lifting up our voices as women does not mean that we're having a uh, having a dump all over men. It means that we're lifting up our voices as women, right? Now, a female friend of mine answered and several other people answered similarly. Watching my surroundings when I'm taking a walk around the block near work, changing sides on the sidewalk if I have time. I don't want to pass any man on the street if I can help it. Took a self-defense class last semester. Learned where the soft spots are and how to get the element of surprise. Carrying my phone at all times and being ready to call someone if I have to. Watching while I'm on the train. Yeah, public transportation is a real issue for women. Uh, Moving cars if someone is being strange. That's mostly the everyday stuff. Uh, Another female friend of mine and several others uh, waited and and agreed on this is uh, expressing the following. If I don't cover up the cleavage at work... There are a couple male clients who will stare at the boobs and not my face. If I have a new male client after 5 p.m., my husband comes and sits in the waiting room to babysit. There's other stuff I don't even think about because it's habit. When I catch them, I'll add on here. Another woman weighs in. I have a daughter with an intellectual disability. She will be raped. Folks, let's sit with that for a minute, shall we? I have a daughter with an intellectual disability. She will be raped. There is nothing for me to do because one day I will die. I I mean, how powerful is that? How powerful is that? I... I, I honestly, that, that really took me um, as I read that. And so I appreciate you giving me just a moment because that is, um, that is incredible. Wow. Wow. This is a new answer that just came in. And this woman feels that her daughter with an intellectual disability is at such a disadvantage in this world that she will be raped. And she knows that as time goes by, she won't be there to protect her daughter. Powerful stuff. And really 
horrible stuff, really sad, disgusting, twisted, horrible stuff. I can't even imagine what she must feel. Several other women weighed in after a friend of mine commented the next, uh, the next bit of information here. Looking angry, squaring my shoulders to look like I'm ready to fight, actually being ready to fight, looking behind me, minding my six, keeping my keys and mace on my messenger bag strap within reach, avoiding alleys at night, avoiding most things at night without a companion, making sure I'm active. I've activated the five click emergency feature on my iPhone and keeping that in hand. If outdoors exercising, doing it in a very public space, triple checking. I've locked my doors, sleeping with an aluminum baseball bat within reach upcoming concealed carry, you know, regular stuff. Another friend weighs in, and I want to appreciate uh, her answer for a moment. I just want to take a moment to thank her for being so um, incredibly honest. I want to thank everyone for being so incredibly honest. This was a really important but upsetting discussion and something that needs to be talked about. And so without your bravery, I wouldn't be here doing this show today. I would not be here... Um, trying to boost your voices and, you know, having the hopefully starting, starting discussions with those of you who are listening, right? I wouldn't be sitting here on this platform, hopefully starting some and sparking some good thoughts and good discussions among those of you who are listening in without you guys who have shared. So thank you. And your candid honesty has been just absolutely incredible. So here is my my friend's comment. Number one, I gained a lot of weight. I've since realized that a lot of that was subconsciously about insulating myself and being less desirable. I've since gotten past that subconscious need and I'm struggling to reverse it. Obviously not easy. Number two, I was very promiscuous in my younger years, which I realize now was a way of feeling some control over my sexuality, being able to choose with whom I was sexually involved, except when I didn't choose it, of course. Except when I didn't choose it. Number three, I currently am a very fiery person. I can attest to that. Hey. <laughs> Uh, in a good way, of course. Uh, speaking up when I see others being taken advantage of or when I feel a man is being bullying in some way. This has put me in dangerous positions in the past, but I've been driven by wanting to fight back in a way I didn't when I was molested or raped. I've actually recently, in the last several days, been reflecting on how this may be why I am so reactive in road rage type situations. Because I feel that the cars that were that we are in rather neutralize the power differential. And I therefore feel empowered to say, no, you will not bully your way into this lane and cut me off. I have very astute driving skills in those kinds of situations. And I find myself getting way too aggressive. I'll show you kind of thing. Not good. I know. But with all of this processing I've been doing the past several days, I've recognized the connection. And by the way, that's awesome. Yes. Round of applause. And number four, I am very vigilant when I walk down the street, day or night. If I am walking to my car, I walk with the largest key held between my two middle fingers and a fist to be ready if anyone were to surprise me. If I'm walking from the train without reason to have my keys in hand, I regularly pay attention to the heaviest thing I am carrying and am sure to have it readily accessible, usually my large stainless steel water bottle. I watch behind me, in front of me, to the sides. I slow my walk and vigilantly look every time I walk past an alley. I live in the city of Chicago. I walk past many alleys daily. When I notice someone walking behind me, I intentionally slow down and move to the side to let them pass me. 
I do not like anyone close behind me, male or female. Once I turned into a, onto a residential street off the main heavily trafficked street, I pay attention to every vehicle that is behind, near, or ahead of me, paying attention to if they slow down or appear suspicious. When a vehicle slows down near me, even if just to legitimately prepare to park, I make sure they see me seeing them, and I will continue looking behind me to make sure I know where they are and what they are doing at any given time. It's only smart, right? She continues, when I have driven, not as often now, when approaching my car after watching around me as described above, before getting there, if I am getting into the car by myself, I glance under the car as I approach and look in the back seat before getting in. I even do both of these things with quick stops, even just at gas stations, for example. Oh, speaking of gas stations, I like to lock my car doors when I'm pumping my gas. Yeah, I do the same thing, and I absolutely, absolutely agree that that's an incredibly smart thing to do. And then she adds, also, all of our house doors are locked at all times, even when we are both home and awake. But that's not just about sexual vulnerability. That's about general safety living in the city. Another friend goes on to remark, pretty much everything that women above said, I check my back seat of my car before getting in. Before I was married, I had a ring that I would wear on my wedding finger to repel men if I didn't want to deal with them. Wearing clothes that cover my boobs, ass, curves. In college, always getting my own drink and never letting it go unattended. And if I did, I would just get a new drink. Keys, being aware of my surroundings, watching everyone on the train, bus, public spaces, etc. Now with a child, I have become more aware of predators and making sure that she is always near me at all times. Uh, my next uh, reader and friend says, Be confident. Love it, girl. Be confident. Men like to go for women they view as prey or an easier target. So be bold, be strong, be intimidating. And one thing I always do when walking alone is to walk in detours to avoid sketchy people. Always be aware of your surroundings. I will also avoid eye contact with people and they are less likely to make remarks or try to start a conversation. Looking forward to this segment, girly. Please keep me posted on when it will air. Hey. A uh, male friend. Predators are always a threat. They congregate in sketchy areas as well as in upscale areas. These thieves take honor and pride in small bits and chunks as a matter of sport. True. I would like to know what he, this person does, though, if anything, on a daily basis. I would assume um, maybe nothing at all, but perhaps there are things that that he does and I would love to know that a female friend goes on to remark keep keys ready for fast entry of car no eye contact stern look get a stun gun and pepper spray come off as tough tomboyish even watch some Michelle Rodriguez movies for demeanor (laughs) hey love it it also wouldn't hurt to take some self-defense classes or at the very least watch some YouTube videos on it Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, Not that it should be in our purview to have to um, stop a rape or a potential rape, you know, as women. But sometimes it is. And it's not okay, but it's the way things are. And so taking action, sadly, sometimes is the only way to uh, truly avoid such a situation. So my next reader goes on to remark, I think there is so much I do subconsciously because I have had, I've had to since I was like 11, 12 years old growing up in Chicago. I know I do the resting bitch face, square off my shoulders, carry mace, be aware of my surroundings, etc. The harder times are in a work environment. That's when I have to be crafty. I either ignore the comments, or if the person is way out of line, I just call them out on it. Uh, The next person goes on to remark, 
I purposely dress in ways that I feel makes me look grungy and minimizes my body. I was never like this in my youth, but now I can feel eyes all over me and I just want to blend in. I spend most of my time alone and I'm very uncomfortable having a drink in a bar because I'm a target. If I have a drink out anywhere, I have to be with a friend or somewhere uh, that I know nobody will bother me. I sometimes let my crazy show just to make people uh, nervous around me. I'm hyper vigilant at all times about who's nearby and what vibes they are giving off. I carry a knife if I'm particularly nervous. There is more, but this is all I can share right now. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I thank you for sharing. And then I'm going to let you guys know up front that the next um, post is mine. And just being um, somewhat of a public personality, I have to do more than many people do. Although uh, apparently some of my friends and readers and listeners are, are with me, given what they've said. So... Some of the things I do are wear my noise-canceling headphones, even when I'm not listening to anything. Talk to myself with my phone up to my ear if left alone in a deserted area where I feel unsafe or if left alone with men. And yeah, that's a thing I have to do a lot more often than I would like. I... I don't like having to walk around like a crazy person with my phone up to my ear talking to myself. It's not a fun situation. Um, It doesn't necessarily add to the old self-esteem, right? Pretend to answer phone calls. Again, in the same vein. Not go out alone at night, sometimes. Avoid police on deserted roads when driving alone. Folks, there are a lot of horror stories about... Uh, women driving alone being pulled over by police who likely, you know, the the woman driving hasn't done anything. They've just been targeted by a predator. Um, and I, I prefer not to put myself in that situation. So if I'm on a road alone uh, with police behind me, especially if they are following me as they tend to do because, you know, revenue and pulling people over and macho Napoleon complexes and all of that fun stuff. Um, you know, I will, I will turn, I'll turn off. I will pull over. Um, I'm not a drinker. I'm not a drug user. I'm not somebody who, um, you know, would be engaging in any kind of an unlawful situation, but I absolutely am afraid of what could happen. Um, if, the police were to target me. And I've even been, as, as I've told you guys on the show before, I have actually been pulled over because a police officer, quote unquote, didn't like the looks of me. Excuse me? And, and the same police officer pulled myself and another mixed race gentleman over all at once, running me off the road and pulling over the guy ahead of me. Um, because apparently he didn't like the looks of him either. Uh, The police officer walked back to my car and began smashing his fist into my car uh, with extreme rage and essentially going off on a diatribe about how hard his job was. And I simply asked if I was being detained and what his suspicion was. And I told him that I would be happy to contact my police chief friend um, and that I was going ahead and dialing his number in my phone. And if he had anything to say to that individual, he, he's welcome to stick around and have a conversation with them. Right now, not everyone has something like that. They can pull out of their pocket. And frankly, it probably would have been a 50, 50 to whether my friend was even available to pick up the phone. But Uh, The fact that this happened, and this was, folks, this wasn't even at night. This was in a brightly lit, popular, um, crowded area on a main drag. Um, This is the entitlement that folks, uh, men in particular, can operate with. And they don't have to answer to anyone about it. This person was probably slapped on the wrist um, and wasn't in any way penalized, didn't lose their job, um, as they should have, 
in my opinion. You do not run somebody off the road, punch their car with your fist, and then go on a diatribe about how hard your life is. That's ridiculous. Get the fuck out of here. So, um, yeah, obviously after that incident, um, I'm not comfortable being followed by a police officer who, you know, nine times out of ten are going to be male, right, on a deserted road at night. And no, thank you. No, I'll pass. Um, Not answer my door if I don't expect company. I will never answer my door if I don't expect company. Um, It's simply not going to happen. So, you know, if your neighbor dropping by with a pie, sorry, tough luck. (laughs) You know, I'm not going to answer my door. I don't feel comfortable. You know, it, and I uh, have the same rules with my phone. I don't answer my phone if I don't know who's calling. Uh, it could be a reader or listener who's calling to threaten to rape or murder me, a, a thing that's actually happened in the past. And, you know, while that doesn't actually concern me because I do feel like I can take care of myself, it, it does contribute to an overall uh, feeling of targeting and being targeted and being, like, victimized, you know? So, uh, I don't answer my phone if I don't know who's calling. You can leave a voicemail. Uh, I moved to a high security building with magnetic locks where every square inch is covered by several cameras. Um, part of, part of the reason I moved to this specific building was because I had a couple of prowlers outside of my old apartment. Um, both when I was running for office and just after I ran for office as I was, you know, like a local organizer and writer and podcaster and social media personality. And, you know, it's never okay. It's just simply never okay to show up at someone's house and to prowl around their house. I mean, that's that's some fucked up shit, guys. Come on now. You know what? Let's be real. That's some fucked up shit. Don't do that. You know, if anything, it makes you look like you do not have a life. Okay? So if you have a life and you have other things to get on with, perhaps you should attend to those things rather than showing up at... Uh, women's houses to try to, I guess, intimidate them in some way. Um, And in fact, I had a neighbor at the last place I lived who was uh, uh, not just a gun enthusiast, but I would say a gun nut. Um, He was really into firearms. He would bring his children around to like firearms shows. His kids were like three and four um, I would hear him yelling and screaming at his kids, uh, swearing at his kids. Uh, he would bang on my windows at night. He would be outside singing to me, drunk, crying because I didn't answer my door or, you know, say anything when he banged on my windows. Um, he even told a friend of mine that he was upset with me that I didn't answer when he banged on my windows, to which my friend said, well, that's probably because you didn't knock on her door. People don't answer their windows. So, you know, this isn't, this isn't me being paranoid. This is based on my own experience, unfortunately. And I am a rape survivor as well and a sexual, multiple times sexual assault survivor. I was raped by my ex, who I I believe was probably something along the lines of a narcissist. I'm not 100% sure on that, um, because clearly I have um, a bias in this situation, and I can't diagnose, but I, I think that he was probably very likely something along the lines of a narcissist. He was not a well person. He was not a kind person, and he physically assaulted me several times. Um, He uh, forced himself on me several times. Um, And because I was in that victim mind state, it didn't matter that I had studied, you know, black belt level Hapkido. It didn't matter that I had studied martial arts for 
years that didn't matter um, because I had been gaslit to the point where at that at that point in time I was very young at the time too um, at that point in time I believed that the more I would submit myself to him uh, I guess almost the cleaner my record would be. Like the next time he got upset, I I could be like, well, you know what? I let you go ahead and rape me or, you know, I probably wouldn't use those words, but I let you go ahead and do what you wanted the last every single time you've wanted to have, like, have sex. I've let you do exactly what you wanted to do despite being in pain, despite having been at, at one point uh, just a couple of days out of a major surgery. Um you know, I, I've let you do what you wanted to do, so you really can't be upset with me. And it was almost like I had to keep that record with myself so I could feel okay about myself. I really got into a victim mentality on that. I really got into a victim mentality on that. And, um, you know, I, I went down an unhealthy path for a while, but, you know, as I matured, I realized that it was within my power to uh, move out of that headspace. And, you know, as time went on and I gained my own confidence, he just looked more and more ridiculous to me and less and less powerful and less and less relevant in, in my life and more and more of a scared little boy. And he just, he just lost his power with me, you know, he lost his power with me, and I'm glad to say that, but I still went through what I went through, and it was utterly horrific, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, um, after that, years after that, I actually had a potential client uh, try to bring me into a private space and expo- he exposed himself to me and attempted to assault me. I forced him away from me. This is when I first started my business years ago. I, I forced him away from me and I locked up and just let him fuck off over the horizon somewhere. Obviously, he didn't contact me again, and I didn't feel comfortable reporting it because, you know, as you as you know, look what happened a couple of days ago. Shit hasn't changed. Um, women aren't believed. We're questioned. What were you wearing? What did you do to make this happen? Well, I had the gall to run a business. Jesus Christ, woman. Were you asking for it or were you asking for it, right? So, you know, I didn't want any of that. I didn't want any of that. And so I chose not to report it because what would it bring me except controversy? Look, um, there's a local woman activist in my in my local community who spoke up about harassment not rape but harassment and was utterly shit on her life was just picked apart you know this is what happens oftentimes when we report um, abuse of any kind and I don't want that I didn't want that to mire my business that was just starting out in controversy I kept the clothes I was wearing that day too um, you know, I, there, there were certainly no stains or anything on them, but I felt like, you know, maybe his DNA is on them somewhere because he did try to touch me several times. Um, and, and I kept him. I just, I never reported it, but I felt like just in case, you know, um, never wore him again, obviously, because hey, who wants, uh, to remember a client trying to, come on to you and reaching up your skirt, right? Right? I mean, who wants to have a wonderful memory of that? Um, trying to have sex with you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've definitely 
been in other instances where I was not in any way uh, inviting someone to try to have sex with me, and yet they tried, right? Um, it's not it's not a fun thing to experience, and I think many women have been through similar things. So, again, no paranoia here. This is based on all of my experience, and so I feel really comfortable in the high security building that I live in now. If you if you even come around the fucking block, okay, you're gonna be on camera. There's gonna be a record that you were here, and in fact, side note. My cousins and I, um, when we were, uh, we were, it, we came back to my apartment. We had gone out, came back to my apartment. Like they were getting their like beds ready in the living room, and um, my cousin knocks on my bedroom door. He's like, "Do you hear what's going on outside?" I was like, "What? No!" Like my air purifier was on. I'm like, "No, what's going on?" He goes, "There's a woman out out there yelling for help." So. Fun fact, fun story, um, we actually did witness an assault on the property, on the property of my building, but because it was caught on camera, we we still intervened because, um, you know, we didn't want there to be a chance that this woman would be, God forbid, killed or, or injured or anything like that. So we still intervened, but because this was caught on camera, um, this gentleman did not have anywhere to turn. Like, it It was caught on camera. They figured out who it was. He's not here no more, right? So he he had nowhere to turn on that because of the cameras all around our building. So I feel comfortable knowing not only could they serve their purpose should they need to, but they have. They have done. Um, We have magnetic locks, like I mentioned, Every square inch of the of the building of the entire uh, block that the building is on is a hundred percent covered by cameras inside and outside. Uh, I also tend to not go alone into parking garages um, in public or unknown areas. I tend to pretend I don't hear the lewd and inappropriate comments that uh, men make to me on a daily basis. I I tell men to fuck off with their disgusting comments weighing in about my body because guess what? Unless I've asked you to weigh in about my body, I don't want to hear boo from you. It's not appropriate. I'm sorry it's not. It's not appropriate. So I will tell men to, fu- to fuck off with their disgusting comments weighing in about my body or what they like to do to me or what they wouldn't like to do to me or what they'd like me to do to them or what they wouldn't like me to do to them. Right? I'll I'll let them know to go ahead and fuck right off over the rainbow, play leapfrog with a unicorn, play leapfrog with a rhinoceros, right? I will tell them to go ahead and do that and I have no no qualms about it. I walk quickly when I can. I definitely mean mug. I keep at least one legal weapon on me at all times. I hold my keys in such a way that I can easily stab an attacker in the groin carotid or solar plexus. I wear sunglasses. I wear a hoodie with my hood up. Again, with over my headphones with sunglasses. And yet, still, um, folks feel like that's just an absolute invitation to say disgusting things. Like, I guess that is an invitation. That is just being too promiscuously dressed. Uh, Zipped up hoodie, Uh, headphones, black sunglasses, dude, you're asking for it, right? Like, is that not the outfit of someone who's asking for it? But it it helps me to at least be able to ignore comments and pretend like I didn't hear them. So that's, that's good, I guess. Um, I definitely tell men who won't stop advancing on me that I will physically defend myself with extreme prejudice and impunity. And I will, and I have, and That is absolutely non-negotiable for me. Uh, I say no with no explanation. When asked, begged, and pestered even to give someone I don't know or don't want to be around my time, uh, this just in, when a woman is on the street, when a woman is uh, outside of her home uh, or even in her home, it's very likely... 
guys that she's on her way to doing something or going somewhere, that she has her time booked up and doesn't need for you to entertain her or detain her or take her time at this moment. In fact, if you haven't asked, hey, do you have a moment? I'd like to talk with you. I think you should assume that this woman has other things to do and places to go and simply uh, wish her uh, a good day. Maybe say hi if that feels appropriate and she's not otherwise engaged and simply be on your way, right? Because other people, no matter what their sex or gender is, they're not entitled to our time. We get to decide who we spend our time with and how and when and why, right? Something to keep in mind. So saying no with no explanation is something I'll absolutely do. Sometimes I wear a ring. Um, I don't wear clothes that I feel like I will be objectified in oftentimes. Like I, I love fashion and makeup And if you know me, you definitely know that about me. Um, But there are times when I will purposely dress down because I don't want some creeper staring down my shirt or trying to grab me. Um, For instance, at a concert my friend and I were at recently, um, there were two lovely gentlemen behind us, one of whom was continuously grabbing my friend, even though he was there with his girlfriend. And the other of whom was rubbing his dick on my head the entire time. So, were we dressed promiscuously? No. We were in fucking ponchos. Fucking ponchos, okay? It was raining. Ain't nobody was dressed inappropriately. Not that it's anyone else's business to tell us how to dress, of course. But what I'm trying to say to you is that it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Someone is going to find it appropriate at some point in time to utilize your body as if it's public space if you're a woman. And so I understand where I'm coming from, certainly, and where others who have stated that they dress similarly are coming from when they say, oh, yeah, I dress it to cover up because I don't want that attention, that inappropriate attention. But, you know, even if you dress to cover up, you're still going to get it. You could be wearing a burqa and you're still going to get it, unfortunately. Uh, The last thing I do is I utilize a paid safety app on my phone where a team of first responders will come to my location at the press of a button. And, of course, of course, I uh, go ahead and utilize the uh, safety factors on my iPhone. And so these are some of the some of the things that I have done and that my friends and readers and acquaintances do on a daily basis um, to avoid rape. Uh, several of my other guy friends and readers have weighed in and um, said that they don't do anything on a daily basis to avoid rape. Um, and You know, I'm glad that they don't have to, but I'm not glad that I do have to. I'm not glad that women have to. It's not, it's not okay. It's not an okay situation. And so I think that this demonstrates something. It demonstrates that there certainly is a difference, uh, a divide, a very stark difference between what women have to do on a daily basis and what men have to do. And there seems to be a very clear indication that um, men are more often than not the predators in these situations. And so really, men, if you're listening, it's down to you. To simply control your behavior. You're capable of it. I'm not going to sell you short. You're capable of it. You're absolutely capable of controlling yourselves. Um, You're capable of moderating your behavior. It's absolutely possible. I also happen to know that you're very capable of letting your friends know when they make disgusting comments, when they do things that are inappropriate, that you're watching and that in your presence, that kind of stuff is not going to fly. So that would be a good place to start. 
And I can understand if this makes you feel uncomfortable or challenged, but I think that's an opportunity for you because the feeling that you're feeling right now for two hot seconds while I'm talking, you know, is something that women feel about times a thousand constantly on a daily basis. So I think that is actually a learning opportunity. If you're feeling that way, it's a learning opportunity. You can go, oh, wow, this is actually how women feel on a daily basis. So maybe this is something I can help to change by being a respectful human being. And we're not asking you for any special favors here. You're you're not a prince if you're... uh, I hate to tell you because I'm asking you to do all of this, but you're not a prince if you're just behaving like a normal human being with decency and respect. That doesn't make you a special prince. That means that you're a human being who is capable of not raping people. Okay? So that's how you can be an ally. Uh, You can be a respectful human being and continue to be a respectful human being, and you can hold space for women that do want to discuss this matter and you can listen and you can digest and you can sit with it okay so i know it sucks to hear it it's a hard thing to to swallow but you you do have this opportunity here before you and i know you're capable of taking it i know you're capable of taking it and i know that many of you have been sexually assaulted as well and I'm really really sorry for that it's not okay Um, it's not an epidemic against men as it is against women but anyone who has been uh, through sexual abuse or assault I I feel you I'm there with you I'm standing with you Um, we need to work together on this So I just want to thank everyone again for weighing in. Obviously, this wasn't a fun topic to weigh in on. It wasn't something fun to discuss, but it needs to continue to be discussed. And those of us who don't have these experiences need to listen. That's our job. For those of us who have not had these experiences, listening is our most important job. And making sure that we hold safe space for other people is also our job. All right, that's going to do it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, thank you for listening to my personal story as well in all of this. I hope that it uh, brings you something along the lines of understanding. I'm sure that there are other women out there that empathize, who empathize uh, with this this uh, personal story and I thank you I just thank you for holding space and I thank you for being here and I want you to be well